So this example I am not going to focus more on the design side. Uh, my focus is going to be on the object side, uh, data types. So I am not going to be worried about the storyboard and its layouting technique which we have seen a number of things. So at this point we will see what kind of data type exists. So in that way we will proceed. Fine. Time being, we are not going to need this. So, I'm just going to show you, like you know, what kind of data types. Uh, I mean, in terms of array, array and dictionary. So, one first type is I'm going to talk about NS array. So. An NS array, as I saw, uh, as I told, once it is initialized, after that it cannot be modified. So typically, an array can be denoted with the at the rate square box. Uh, looks similar to JavaScript what we saw, only difference at the rate. So another one data type which is called NS dictionary, some name. That typically looks like this way. So these two types we are going to see, and one more we have NS mutable array. I'll come back because that can be okay. I'll I can initialize an empty array NS mutable arrays. Initializing empty mutable array will be looking like this. So if you write in this way, it's an empty array. No data, but value has been defined. I mean initialized. You may correlate with the new keyword of whatever. So just initialize empty mutable array. So NS mutable dictionary. We have four types I have defined. This is a fixed. I can directly assign the value, but once assigned, no way of modifying. This I can simply create an empty set of object and I can modify it any point of time in the code. So here, assuming you are going to create say a list of names, maybe sorry. Objective C strings always contain a typical array list of names or something you can create quite easily. It is something as we understand. A dictionary always a key value pairs or attribute name and attribute values or some sort of relationship contained. So that I can create in such a way. Say first name So like that, if you see that uh, how it's been used, am I missing anything? Oh, sorry. The first one, plain array, no problem as number of set of strings being used as we understand. This is an object, usually a key value set. So a first name and last name and subject, those are all the key and these are all the values it takes. So a dictionary can be created in this way, an array can be created in this way, if you really want to iterate. Uh, for array, probably a standard 
for loop and of course it's giving me a suggestion standard for loop is quite easy as we all understand but I won't be I'm not going to use this kind of a loops maybe as program goes so count I need I less than Object at the index five. <coughs> so you can iterate in this way. Standard for loop, and it going to iterate until the count exhausted. And of course, you know you can get an index, or you can get the value of the given index by iterating over it, and it's going to print as in this way. So it's fixed array. This array does not have a capability to modify or whatever just fix it the kind of thing and similarly the dictionary as well so dictionary once you uh, define and you won't be having any way to retrieve them at all so here this is where i'm going to make a slightly different let us create a couple of dictionary elements set value for a key so I can set the value This is a dynamic addition of the same what I did in the single line but since it is a mutable directory I can dynamically add it so once I initialize with the empty dictionary I can define its attribute and then I mean attribute name and the value oh, sorry uh, value and the attribute slightly it's a different way but of course this is attribute name this is the value it takes so maybe this is a key this is a value so you can dynamically create the object if it is a mutable for example if it is having a keyword mutable mutable tells it can be dynamically modified or indexed in any way you want so this object can be added to because this array also a dynamic array so add the object so when first time when you create this dictionary and finally the value is being added to this array because array is a dynamic one unlike this one a single value it is a dynamically added array I am going to add a couple of sets so let me do thanks to automatic reference counting I don't need to worry about so second reference I can create So whenever a new mutable dictionary instance is created, I'm just going to add them to the existing value. So if you notice that three set mutual uh, mutable dictionary is going to have three set of record. Each set of record is having a different uh, keys like a first name, last name, and subject with a different different values. And once the value has been created, it's been added to the array 
so now I can iterate this one see how it maybe I can directly put a ns log instead of iterating because ns log can still iterate or can display the entire content of your array so, so we can see how it is looking like I'm just going to display this beautiful array See the output each set is having each object of a mutable array contains these key value pairs so now we can dynamically assign the value if it is a mutable copy so an array by default is a fixed amount of data I can hard code the value and once it defined naturally it does not have any capability to dynamically add or edit anything it is exactly same like java concept of the array similarly we have a object type which is called ns dictionary where you can create an object having a key value pair relations so this is also not a mutable copy that's the reason i am hard coding and of course i can iterate it as i want uh, let us see how I can iterate the dictionary as well. Object for a key, if we define. can get the value of it so if you really want to get the information on the dictionary and define the uh, op key and get the value so this is a way you can iterate or get the value of a dictionary or otherwise you can dynamically create such a dictionary by defining it as a mutable di uh, dictionary and then give a star I mean key value pair relationship and add the values so using these two data types or maybe these four data types I'm going to create the same student uh, what you call uh, record what we created in JavaScript while doing it of course this is the base data type I'm going to use maybe a mutable array with the object I mean NS mutable array and NS uh, mutable dictionary using them I'm going to create a table uh, view or maybe table view controller we have a table view controller as well so using these two data types or maybe these four data types I am going to create a simple uh, table representation but it has a lot of uh, other inf uh, information to be discussed before starting that one we have to find a way to save this one because the object we have just created uh, we are not even saving it so if I have to create a table no problem but if it would be good if you see them persisted and the values being saved somewhere so that part we have to see so how to save those contents we have a NoSQL database such as core data here uh, comparatively index db kind of thing here we have core data and here we also have some other way to save data in the temporary memory such as what we did in the local storage assessment well, storage here and we also have a key store sorry uh, keychain uh, object which I can save the essential or maybe sensitive data there are a number of ways I can persist the data so I, we have to see them first and then we have to get into how I can create the table so that uh, a simple table view controller or maybe a view controller with a table view with certain elements uh, I mean uh, which is uh, iterated over inside so typically a table view it's an iteration of same view multiple time so if you create a text view or if you create a label view in this case we have a UI label if a UI label repeated multiple times that becomes a table actually so how many how many times it's going to be repeated based on the data type what you are going to take maybe if you are taking this array so what is the size of an array that many times it's going to be iterate so your result you are going to get a neatly looking table view 
and also we are going to introduce a new concept maybe it's already a concept but here uh, delegating an object so that part I would like to explain maybe so these are all the slightly sensitive concepts behind so which would slightly require some more time to explain you further but before that I want you to make sure uh, you're comfortable with these sm small data types because it's pretty simple and the understanding is pretty clear but going forward we have an enormous use of these object uh, in various uh, application what we are going to use so delegating or maybe I can give you an overview for example uh, you are connecting this array or you are binding this particular array with the table view if you do it what naturally happens whenever the uh, array uh, adds or loses a particular object automatically the view gets identified so delegating an object means binding two objects so one knows the status of another it's like a intermittent some sort of notification being sent to them so that it get refreshed it's quite popular in javascript as well the same concept uh, most of the new uh, uh, frameworks such as angular or knockout which is having two way binding we have that particular concept here uh, we are going to talk that as a delegating a view with the object or with the data so whenever the change happens to this particular data type or this one the view automatically adjust or maybe for example you are adding a new student record somewhere the moment that uh, mutable array gets a new value automatically the table view get updated because it has a delegate connected to it so app delegating or in fact if you see that this, uh, there is a keyword already exists here delegate app delegate so time to get into an internals so we have to see them in detail definitely I would need your entire attention to do that but I'm still I would still make it as a small small example so that you will get to know but once you understand the delegate concept the same concept is going to be repeated in most of the areas where checkboxes or uh, I mean uh, any other view component which is going to come it will be very easy for you having that as a hope that's why I'm going in a very slow uh, phase manner because most of the concept will come look like similar so this is what I would like to explain today so